You will need the following tools for the Fidelia DIY project. Woodworking clamps, ideally as many as possible, with the right size for the cabinet. Some sandpapers or files, a chisel, wood glue, a cutter or a craft knife, a drill with three sizes of drill bits and a countersink drill head, a 5mm Allen key and a 2.5mm Allen key. For the 5mm Allen key, you will want a long one with a ball head. It will make life much easier for you. Screwdrivers in different sizes, a spanner and some masking tape. Before assembling the kit, please check through all the parts on the list. If anything is missing or damaged, please contact us via email. We will sort out the replacement for you. In the package, you should receive plywood parts for a pair of cabinets, four blocks of foam in different sizes, a paper template for drilling screw holes on the rear panel, a pair of base reflex ports, a pair of woofers, a pair of front baffles with a tweeter installed, a pair of finished crossovers, a pair of speaker terminals, two strips of gasket, and five types of screw. You should clean the sawdust off the birch ply parts and carefully sand the edges of the parts so they can be fitted together flush and form a tight construction. In the following two steps we don't need the rear panel of the cabinet, so let's put it aside first. It is important to assemble the cabinet without glue as a practice. You can do it once or twice until you get familiar with the construction of the cabinet, before actually gluing everything together. Here, we tape the cabinet together to show you how it should look assembled. Now it is time for the glue. We believe our DIY kit customers have some basic woodworking skills so we're not going into full detail about how to glue a cabinet together. But the way we prefer to do it is to glue these three pieces first, then the top and bottom panel, and finally the other side panels. You might need to adjust the angle of the bracing and mounting frame pieces from the inside of the cabinet to align and fit everything together perfectly. One thing to keep in mind is that you should try to keep the joints of the rear panel mounting frame as clean as possible. Otherwise, you might have a hard time cleaning it up after the glue is completely cured. You can clean the excess glue by wiping it off with a wet towel. And this is how it should look after the glue is dried. Clean the rest of the glue beads on the cabinet with a chisel. You should check and make sure the rear panel fits in the cabinet before proceeding to the next step. Be aware that the correct position of the terminal holes is at the bottom and the base reflex port hole should be on the left side of the cabinet. Trim the paper template as shown and then align it to the rear panel. With a sharp tool, Mark the centre of the holes to be drilled.
The first set of holes to be drilled are the pilot holes, so you should use a drill bit with a diameter just a bit smaller than the countersink screws. After drilling the pilot holes, remove the rear panel for the next steps, clean away any debris on the mounting frame and sand down any unevenness around the screw holes if needed. Now we have to drill the pilot holes for the base reflex port screws. Install the port and mark the position of the screws with a drill bit or a sharp tool. Again, check the size of the drill bit against the tiny screws before drilling. It is not necessary to drill through the panel for these pilot holes. To flush mount the rear panel properly, you need to make clearance holes for the screws. Simply, Use a drill bit that is a little bit larger than the diameter of the countersink screw and drill through the pilot holes on the rear panel again. The screw should go through the panel easily like this. The last bit of work on the rear panel is drilling the countersink pockets. Now this is done and we can go back to working on our cabinet. To prevent any unwanted air leakage, you need to apply a gasket to the rear panel mounting frame. Due to the location of the base reflex port hole, you should position the gasket at the outer edge of the left side of the frame, but for the rest of it, it will be better to follow the inner edges. You will need to use a knife to trim the gasket to the right length at the end. You should also remove any gasket that covers the screw holes with the knife. Now flip the cabinet over and put the front baffle in place. On the back of the front baffle you'll find two locating pins that will help you to align the baffle to the cabinet. When installing the front baffle, you should position the tweeter cables to where the semicircular cutouts are, so everything will slide in smoothly. Before drilling the pilot holes for the screws, mark the centre of the holes with a drill bit or a sharp tool, and please remove the front baffle before drilling to avoid any accidental damage. Before locking the front baffle in place with the machine screws, please secure the baffle temporarily with some masking tape. Here, I also put a piece of paper in between to prevent any possible glue mark on the baffle. Turn the cabinet around and you can see the two screw holes from the back near the top of the cabinet. The easiest way to place the screw with the washer in place without any tool is to grab the cabinet with one hand and with the other you can access the screw hole through the opening for the woofer and then just do the same for the other one. Tighten the screw with the long Allen key but beware not to go too extreme, which might cause damage to the baffle. For each cabinet, you will need two blocks of acoustic foam, a big one and a small one. The bigger one should be placed at the front section of the cabinet against the bracing. Just like that. The smaller one goes to the rear section of the cabinet. It should be positioned at the bottom and against the bracing as well. Like shown here.
To install the crossover on the rear panel, you will need the speaker terminals, the short countersink screws, a small screwdriver, and a spanner. It is very important to install the speaker terminals with the correct polarity at the right position. The red terminal should go through the positive input hole on the PCB, and the black goes to the negative. Therefore, when looking at the back of the speaker, the red terminal should be on the right, and the black one on the left. If you find it difficult to push the terminal through the hole with your fingers, simply push them against the table or any hard surfaces. Next, we place these shake-proof washers before installing the nuts and tightening the nuts with the spanner. The arrangement for the second set of washers and nuts on top of the crossover PCB is the same. However, do not completely tighten them for now, as you should check if the panel will still fit into the cabinet with the crossover installed. If there is no problem, take it out again and finish the tightening, otherwise you might need to slightly adjust the position of the PCB. On the PCB, you should see four screw holes, as indicated. Install the short screws to these holes to secure the whole PCB down. You don't need to drill pilot holes for these screws, you can simply force them down. Please beware that you should never turn the screws all the way down. You should stop turning the screw when the head of the screw is pressing the PCB down, just enough to prevent any wiggling. You can test that by pressing on the PCB. Please do it slowly and never cause any obvious bending of the PCB. On the top of the crossover, you will find the tweeter connection spades, with the polarity marking next to them. Connect the black spade to the smaller negative terminal, and the white one to the bigger positive spade. Then, bring the red and green cable to the front section of the cabinet through the hole on the bracing. You can pull them out from the front through the woofer opening with the other hand. Remember to tug them back into the cabinet before flipping it over to avoid scratching the front baffle. Now you can install the base reflex port with the mini screws and secure the rear panel in place with the long countersink screws. Finally, we can install the woofer in the cabinet. Connect the red cable to the bigger positive connector on the woofer and the green cable to the smaller negative connector. Carefully align the screw holes and install the hexagon socket screws with an allen key. If you didn't drop the woofer in at the right position, you can use the help of the screws to rotate the woofer slightly or wiggle it until the alignment is correct.
It is advisable to protect the speaker cone with one hand while turning the Allen key, just to prevent any accidental damage. Now you have finished building one of the Fidelia speakers. You can do some basic testing by connecting it to your stereo system, playing music, and see if you can spot any issues. If everything works fine, repeat the process from step 5 onward and complete the other speaker.